last week. It's the quarterback from St. John. It's Vin Narducci who goes out there and leaves a senior present on the field. Uh, 225 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Vin Narducci had himself a Friday night and a way to end his senior year. And as you can hear, once again, the Heralds have invaded the nest. It is a packed house in here showing up to support their guy, Vin Narducci. So you go out there, you know, you're a senior. You, you've been starting since the, uh, your sophomore year and only not started at quarterback as a freshman because uh, you were on the line. You know, playing some time at a, a right guard or tackle or wherever they felt like putting you that day. Yeah. You know, before we get too far into Friday, let's talk about that transition. Um, I really enjoyed offensive line, <laughs> but I was really undersized. So it was that spring after my freshman year. I went out back. I was just doing some footwork stuff. And our quarterback at the time transferred. And so what well, was either going to be like Will or <laughs> Matt Miller? Yeah. But. They're, because you don't typically, when you're looking for your next quarterback, you don't typically pull them from the offensive line. That's not no. usually the, the the order of things. No. So they're like, well, they're, they're such good receivers that we like, they all want to leave our playmakers. So I was like, I'll try. So I just started <laughs> from there. And it was Coach Bento coaching me up every day. And that's where I got to now. Yeah, you know, let's talk a little bit about that Coach Bento relationship you've got there. Because, you know, he's a big champion. Of Vin yeah. Narducci, let me tell you, you know, he's a big believer in Vin Narducci. How much of that, you know, kind of helped you go through? Because, you know, it's not something that's easy. You know better than anybody. That quarterback position, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on there, you know, especially at St. John, where up until this year, you guys seemingly threw 60 yards, uh, 60 times a game. Right. <laughs> I mean, he always believed in me from the start. Always put me in like a position to succeed. Um, he just he always like coached me up during the game, after the game, and even this last week, like, knowing we weren't going to make the playoffs, we were still putting in plays, and he was still, like, working with my feet to, like, get better, and just because he knows that he cares about me so much, so I appreciate him. Yeah, I mean, it's those kind of relationships, I think, that set up for a successful time, right? Um, but, you know, what are some of the things, you know, you came into this senior year that you wanted to work on personally? Was it footwork? Was it arm strength? Was it field vision? What were some of the things you kind of focused on going into this year? Uh, footwork for sure. Um, arm strength always. Just getting the ball down there and, like, ripping it in there. And, um, like, reading defenses pre-snap. And just being able to, like, take my time in the pocket because, like, previous years I haven't really been able to do that. Yeah, I mean, much. your sophomore year, you were essentially a Wildcat quarterback. You know, you had to get that thing and get to the, you know, get out on the boot. But, you know, you got some guys with a little bit of size ahead of you this year. You know, there's some some more time to throw and some more time to think. And, uh, you know, you made the best of it. You know, your touchdown to interception ratio, pretty good, you know, considering, yeah. you know, how much you guys threw this year. Um, but there was kind of a change in the play calling this year. You know, you guys went a little bit more run heavy. You know, you got a workhorse back there in Ryan Williams, oh, yeah. who's, a you know, guaranteed three to five yards of carry every time. Uh, you've been known to carry the ball a time or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love running the ball. <laughs> so what was what was that like as a senior quarterback coming in and, you know, even halfway through the season, kind of dealing with, you know, the fact that what you guys had to do to be successful was run the rock? Um, kind of took the pressure off me a little bit because, like, I mean, we have great linemen. Great running back. I mean, I knew if I was giving the ball to Ryan and he was running behind Grayson, I was guaranteed at least five yards. So it made my job a lot easier just being able to, like, really focus in on what the defense is trying to do and being able to, like, pull the ball sometimes, keep myself. So it made it a lot easier being able to just ground and pound. Now, so you guys this year had a play that in some circles is considered a controversial play. I've been in the box, and I heard the other coaches complaining about it in that tush-push play, <laughs> that yeah. quarterback play. But you guys always manage to get, you know, three to five yards. Some of the times you guys are getting like nine yards off of that. You know, where did – is that because you got these big hogs in front of you or what What, what brought that open? Uh, it starts with Milo. <laughs> Milo and – well, we moved great at guard. And it just, I just run right behind them and Ryan's right behind me pushing me and so is Will. And it just – I really don't do anything. I just keep my feet and they're just they're in there just blocking. And it's just easier to ride those big guys because they're just so strong and 
just makes everything easy. Well, you know, one play in particular that sticks out in my mind, and so you're going to get grilled a little bit more than everybody because I got to call every one of your games this year. Uh, you know, I go back to the Wyndham game where you guys started the game <laughs> with that goal line play, that touch line, that yeah. touch, and you got around 15 yards. Was that something? Was that a surprise or? To you on the play call, or is that something you were ready to do? Uh, no, we knew we knew they were undefeated, and we knew that they were. Well, I mean, they're probably thinking it's little St. John, and the previous year we beat them, so they're. I mean, we just wanted to punch them in the face real quick <laughs> and show them that <laughs> you know this is what we're gonna do all game, and it worked a little bit for the most part. We ran right down their throats all game. Well, you most certainly did. I mean, I think clock control was something that um, if I had to name something that was the biggest difference from last year to this year, it was clock control. And the fact that last year you guys got stopped on the one yard line about four times, yeah. you know, to end the games. And that wasn't so much a problem this year. Uh, but, you know, you 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 go into the, the difference in play calling this year. You guys relied a lot on that screen pass. But every once in a while, old Vinny got to show off the shotgun. Um, and throw it downfield. Talk a little bit about finding some different targets as this year, you know, uh, you take your 1,000 yard receiver and Will Anderson, you put him in the backfield for pretty much the three quarters of the season. Yeah. And you've got another young guy who goes out there and makes some plays in, in, in Gus Petros. Oh, well, I'll tell you, Gus, being a freshman, like he really impressed me. I mean, he comes from a family of athletes like Gray and his obviously his brother, college, college football player. So all summer, Gus after practice every day, which be like, then you want to throw, then you want to throw. And I was like, of course. And I think he's going to have, he has a lot of potential to be a really good player for a long time. And I appreciate all the work he put in. Same with uh, Chase Newsom. Chase Newsom was he, another big time addition. He really stood out. I mean, he was just right there with Gus, always wanting to stay after practice, run some routes and just work on getting the connection ready for the season. And they paid off. Yeah, it, it, it most certainly did. You guys had a completely different look. There was some confidence. There was some swagger to to Harold's football this year. Uh, but, you know, let's talk a little bit about Friday. So you go into Friday. Obviously, like you said, you knew the playoffs were off the table. This was going to be your final time as a Herald. Um, you guys went out there and had yourself a game. Uh, you got to throw the ball all over the yard, including a connection to Will Anderson. A, a fellow senior, a guy that you've been playing with through this whole time. What was that like hitting him far downfield? You get to show off your arm. You get to show off his athleticism. How did that go? Uh, it was great. You know, it kind of brought me back to the days when we were little, <laughs> playing backyard football. And uh, now that we're seniors, like it's just it's just really cool that we were able to have that as the like the last touchdown of the season. So that he was able to score, and then we just know like we're just really close friends and just able to do that. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a trust there, and you, you saw it last year. There were, You saw it this year. You know, when you throw it down there, you feel like uh, those guys are going to be able to go get it no matter where it's at. Yeah, I mean, Will's Waffle House, he's, he's always open. <laughs> <laughs> Will's Waffle House. If you would have told me that at the beginning of the year, that would have been his name the whole year. What are you doing to me, Vin? I need those, I need those tidbits, man. I know. <laughs> So, you know, not just Will going out there. You know, this whole senior class, you guys go out there. I believe there was nine of you, ten of you? Yeah, ten, nine, ten. Nine or ten of you guys going out there. And uh, you guys were a very close class. You know, this is a, a group of guys, you know, with the exception of a couple transfers coming in, like Grayson and those guys. Um, but you guys have all been playing together. What was it like getting to play with these guys that, you know, you've been heralds and you've played football together since you guys were little? Well, Gray, Gray and Ethan came over. And that kind of just like completed like our childhood. And I was like, you know, it was pretty cool to just be able to hang out with all of them during football, just grind it out and just have a great time and, and just try and succeed the best we can. And it was just a great way to have our senior year go with all our friends and just being super close and enjoying it. So, you know, you're a multi-sport athlete. You've been known to play some hoops. You've been known to, you know, I've seen you play baseball. From what I hear, you might be swinging a racket on the tennis court this year. Uh, but, you know, primarily, you know, your, your other biggest sport is, is basketball. Um, you know, how do you think that that helps you, especially in the football? Uh, well, I like my footwork, definitely from basketball. I mean, I've been playing basketball since I was – I can't even remember. So, like, just being able to, like, move my feet well and just having, like, the vision, like, see the court and then it translate into the field and just do those things. I mean, it makes a difference, you know, and, and one of the things that we got a chance to see now last year, a little bit more often than this year, but Vin Narducci got a chance to play on the defensive side of the ball. 
Um, and, and you made sure that that one play you got counted as you lay an absolute hammer <laughs> on the play. Um, you know, one of those things is when you get on, when, when you get those hits, you seem almost as excited, if not more, than when you throw a touchdown pass. Which one do you like doing more? Defense, because I never get to do it. <laughs> I, we were on the sideline. It was the fourth quarter, and Coach Fry looks at me and goes, get your mouth beast. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I run out there and I just I just see everybody like all my like Will Gray, um, Gus, Chase, Sully, all the linemen. I'm just I just look at them like, well, I got eight minutes left, so I just gotta make count. Just go out there and hit somebody. <laughs> so yeah, you go out there, you definitely made it count. Um, you know, there was a couple times last year even, and you know, you've had a, just like I think every other high school football player, every quarterback, you've dealt with injury here and there, but you've always found a way to kind of fight through that injury I can I can remember times last year when you got hurt they bump you out to tight end you make a catch you run down the field uh this year you know a couple times you've gotten hurt you just get right back out there there's a toughness to your game where do you think that toughness comes from um well I just I can't believe I can't leave them out there it just I being on the sidelines is something I don't like being uh, like doing so it's like it's temporary I know it's I know it's gonna hurt but it's gonna hurt more and five years when I'm thinking like I probably could have played through it. So I was thinking like I can, I can play through this. And that's I'll tell you what, Vin, that's an excellent way to look at that. It hurts now, but it'll hurt more later knowing that you could have made a difference. Now, you know, it's your senior year. You're coming. Football comes to an end. We we're upon hoop season here, you know, before you know it, but uh, before even, you know, it more is the fact that you're going to graduate. So what are your plans after graduation? Uh, I just applied to Bowling Green, looking at environmental science, and which is what my dad does, and he has his own business. So probably about 10, 15 years, plan to take that over and just learn from him. I'll tell you what, that's a man with a plan, folks. You know, we've asked that question a couple times, and most of the time it's, I don't know, I'm going to go to college and do something. Vin's got his major ready. He's got his job ready. He's ready to go. Uh, it, it, it's really been fun. I'll tell you what, Vin, watching you uh, go from that sophomore quarterback, first time you've ever gone, to this senior year where you're out there and you became a true leader. You know, it's been, it's been something that's been really, really cool. I've had the honor and the privilege to get to watch you fight through those adversities and still remain Vin Narducci through all of those things. So, you know, thanks for everything you've done. It's been a great time uh, getting to watch you play football and, you know, we'll miss it next year. That's for sure. But luckily we got a whole hoop season ahead of us. Yep. It's going to be a good season. Yeah, I think so too. I'll tell you what, we'll season. talk about hoops on another show, but that's uh. That's coming up, too. Don't overlook the Heralds just let just yet. But, ladies and gentlemen, our Week 10 Player of the Week, 225 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. It's none other than St. John's Vin Narducci. <laughs>